Hi, this is Empress UX. This is just a quick introduction. This is a condensed version of the Q2 21 Wardstown Motors conference call. I've edited out all the boring stuff. It's down from 45 minutes to 20 minutes. Thanks for watching. Strategy. We have identified five critical strategic priorities for Lordstown Motors that put us on our path to profitability, our factory and our campus. Lordstown controls a 6.2 million square foot manufacturing plant on 650 acres of land in a great location in Ohio's Voltage Valley with access to suppliers, rail, and a highly trained workforce. The plant itself was kept warm by its prior owner and this year we have upgraded the factory such that it is completely vertically integrated with our commissioned battery and soon to be commissioned hub motor lines. As a result, we are now well positioned to produce our endurance truck. We believe that Lordstown's endurance can address both the commercial and direct to consumer segments in the electric pickup truck marketplace. Initially, the commercial fleet segment is one where we have every reason to believe Lordstown's endurance can succeed in a big way. The opportunity is substantial, and it is just a subset of the overall $90 billion potential market for electric light duty pickup trucks. And while there are already competitors, including big brands, the EV pickup market is so underserved that there is plenty of room for all. With our particular focus initially on the commercial fleet market, as well as strategically targeting delivery trucks, military vehicle programs, and technology licensing of our batteries, hub motors, and skateboard platform, we believe Lordstown has a wide and clear road forward into a lucrative and expanding EV marketplace. The leadership team is determined to build the endurance the right way. As everyone knows, the last months have been difficult for vehicle manufacturers generally shortages of semiconductors and vehicle parts of all kinds have created enormous production challenges for even the most established traditional OEMs. And we at Lordstown are not immune from these acute supply problems. Our team is adapting and will continue to adapt to these short-term challenges and to making the best decisions for our stakeholders. First and foremost is production readiness. We will be prudently ramping production to ensure a quality product and to accommodate supplier realities in the near term. We are on track to begin limited production at the end of September and complete vehicle validation and regulatory approvals in December to January. This will be followed by deployments with selected early customers in Q1 in advance of commercial deliveries in early Q2 with the ramp steepening the second half of next year. This responsible commercial plan is important for three reasons. One, to ensure that we provide our fleet customers with the time necessary to experience and then build out the required charging infrastructure for larger deployments. Two, to manage our supply chain challenges prudently, particularly as shortages and COVID impacts persist through the next few quarters. And three, to further fortify our capital position to fully support our commercial launch. Finally, our fifth strategic priority, equity purchase agreement for up to 400 million. The agreement was the first of what we believe will be several steps to ensure that the company has the financing it needs to succeed to profitability. We are now exploring a variety of other financing options, including non-dilutive private strategic investments and debt. We look forward to updating all of you as we reach agreements regarding these new financing options. Provide an update on production, engineering, and quality. First, in terms of management changes, I want to reiterate a strong team we have always had in place in production and in engineering. Second, the endurance betas. We have completed our beta builds and we are using the betas for our crash, durability, and other validation tests. We have passed multiple crash tests and are achieving the, the standard requirements to meet FBMSS and plan for a five-star crash rating for our vehicle. As someone who has over 30 years experience building cars and trucks at many different plants and for many different OEMs around the world, I, I say that to be this far advanced in crash tests 
in a first pass using the beta vehicle is unique and a testimony to the team's innovative use of CAE and design innovation speed and our vehicle technologies. Third, tech these improvements. Once complete, we will lock in with hard tools, which are production equipment needed to build trucks in mass scale cost efficiently. We will use pre-production vehicles for NHTSA crash testing and validation once the final steps before we go to commercial production. Continue to refine the components for cost and quality in production validation and pre-production vehicles. We are launching a mix of soft and hard tools to protect these improvements. Once complete, we will lock in with hard tools, which are production equipment needed to build trucks in mass scale cost efficiently. We will use pre-production vehicles for NHTSA crash testing and validation once the final steps before we go to commercial production. Recall that PPVs will have a production process with battery and hub motors built in-house, as well as paint, sub-assembly, and frames all completed here in our plant. We are retooling the plant to be flexible to ensure build multiple vehicle platforms, vehicle platforms inexpensively from trucks to cars. We have made substantial progress on this since last May when we last spoke. Since last May when we last spoke. The stamping, body, and paint shop reconditionings are all complete. General Assembly is also on track for September production readiness, and we have installed a new ch chassis marriage line. With the flexibility considered upfront in our retooling, our current footprint utilizes about 30% of the plant's 6.2 million square foot, so we have ample room for potential partners to build vehicles for a new ch chassis marriage line. With the flexibility considered upfront in our retooling, our current footprint utilizes about 30% of the plant's 6.2 million square foot, so we have ample room for potential partners to build vehicles. For us to build vehicles for others and for additional LMC vehicle platforms, as well as other opportunities, such as selling batteries, hub motors, and our complete skateboards to other companies. Shifting focus to propulsion. We started installing the first electric hub motor line on site, and it is currently undergoing site commissioning in advance of limited production builds. The first battery pack module and pack assembly line are now fully commissioned. Finally, we continue to develop and refine our hub motors. We want to develop multiple motor sizes and different platforms and use cases and broaden this in. With the flexibility considered upfront in our retooling, our current footprint utilizes about 30%. The first battery pack module and pack assembly line are now fully commissioned. Finally, we continue to develop and refine our hub motors. We want to develop multiple motor sizes and different platforms and use cases and broaden this in, involves increased torque, towing capacity, and energy efficiencies. Improvements to the motors were developed in-house in conjunction with our partners at LAFI. We believe the performance improvements should open up our opportunities set within the commercial space. Our innovative technologies are leverageable in many different ways for Lordstown, including the power, our unique truck skateboard, and to expand our use of our revolutionary hub motor across many vehicle applications. Because of our technology, we have no doubt that we will be at the center of the discussion as fleet customers and consumers look at electric pickup differently. And with that, I will hand over to Becky to take you through the financial. This gives us the flexibility to raise capital quickly and at our discretion. We recognize there is dilution from utilizing this instrument and we want to balance our future capital needs using less dilutive instruments. We are in discussions with multiple parties in exploring access to other types of capital, including public instruments such as debt, strategic partnerships, and we are continuing our discussions with the Department of Energy Loan Program Office regarding our obtaining an ATVM or Advanced Technologies Vehicle Manufacturing Loan. For our land, buildings, machinery, and equipment and vehicles in an amount of $45.5 million. We have invested an additional $240.1 million in construction and progress assets as we continue our plant readiness preparation. We believe that when coupled with billions of dollars that the former owner invested before Lordstown Motors acquired the facility, that the fair market value far exceeds what we are reporting on a gap basis. 
We are in the process of engaging third-party appraisers to opine on this valuation. In connection with the delivery and placement into commercial service of our zero emission vehicles, or ZEVs, under various federal and state rules and standards, we will earn tradable credits that can be sold to other OEMs. We intend to take advantage of these regulatory frameworks by registering and selling these credits. In addition, we have entered into an emissions credit agreement with GM pursuant to which and subject to the terms of which, during the first three annual production model years, wherein we produced vehicles at least 10 months out of the production or model year, GM will have the option to purchase such emission credits at a purchase price equal to 75% of the fair market value of such credits. Please see our 10-KA for a detailed description of additional terms related to these ZEV credits. Our expenses have exceeded prior management's expectations for the reasons laid out earlier, and the pace of our commercial production ramp will depend on multiple factors. We are updating the outlook for full year 2021 that was provided last quarter. First, we have chosen to build a limited number of early production vehicles in the fourth quarter for validation and regulatory clearance, as well as gaining real world experience with customer pilots and demonstrations. This prudence will allow us to mitigate supply chain ramp up risk and expense and achieve more favorable cost of goods targets prior to moving into commercial production and launching Q2. Second, for full year guidance, we expect between 375 and 400 million in capital expenditures up from 250 to 275 million, largely due to prepayments for hard tool purchases. On the operating front, we now forecast 95 to 105 million in SG&A, up from 55 to 60 million, of which 8 million is stock compensation expense, 310 to 320 million in R&D, up from 280 to 290 million, of which 12 million is stock compensation expense. Third, for our liquidity position, we expect our cash at the end of the third quarter to be in a range of 225 to 275 million before giving effect to any financing. As noted above, the equity line gives us flexibility to access with, capital with the and we'll do so. And in terms of the search process for uh, a, a new CEO and CFO, do you have a thought process on some of the priorities on candidates that you want to bring into the company, meaning those with more automotive experience or, or technology experience? Uh, thank you for the question. I'll take the second part first. So we are in an active recruitment process for our CEO and CFO, and that process is proceeding. Um, and there are a diverse range of candidates uh, that we're, we're evaluating and that are evaluating us at the present time. Um, the second, as to the customer and stakeholder response to the new expanded leadership team, uh, as you know, we hosted more than 450 people uh, during Lordstown Week, and that was a very diverse range of investors, policymakers, customers, and suppliers, and the response has been extremely positive. And we've really been able to accelerate our momentum in specifically now that they understand that we're committed to the long-term viability of the company and also really to unlocking the full value, not just for the endurance, but also for the other assets that we have at our, at our disposal. Delivering um, your vehicles. Sure, thanks for the question. It, uh, it was nice to meet you, by the way, at Lordstown Week. Uh, in terms of the, the customers, we, and I'm sure you understand, we're, we're not disclosing the, cost, the specific list of customers, but the contours, um, in addition to Holman ARI, who you, we've already disclosed, we have a vehicle purchase agreement with, uh, we'll be working with fleet management companies and understanding that they're important because they also serve their own fleets, as well as fleet customers directly. And we're hitting all of the major segments, telecom, utility, construction, as well as municipal, and we'll be working with uh, uh, across those segments uh, in, the, in the first quarter as we move to commercial ramp in the second quarter. 
perhaps for the second part of the question, I'll, I'll ask Carter to comment. Yeah, thanks, Manuel. Um, you know, what we've always felt comfortable with is that we build a, a truck that is the quality product and it meets the, the specs that our customers demand and at a price point that's attractive. We're never really concerned with, with demand. We feel very comfortable that uh, there will be demand will most likely outstrip our production capabilities for the first couple of years. We're hesitant to, you know, put a number around it, as you know, because of the way that we have um, discussed our order book in the past. We'll get a lot more feedback as we give some of those customer um, demonstrations and trials, and we expect to continue to pursue expanded vehicle purchase agreements as that process unfolds. And we're still in terms of the time frame. You know, we're very cautious. We don't we don't have a product, right? So we've always said until we have a product available, you know, we can't meet rev recognition um, terms. So their vehicle purchase agreements we continue to pursue do include, you know, some form of deposits. Each of them are different, so these are all each unique. But as we get closer to these demonstrations, we will, you know, become we'll have more forthcoming um, description of what those purchase agreements look like but they generally follow the form of what we've talked about in the past. I have Rich answer that. Uh, thank you for your question, Manuel. Basically, there's not really any difference in the difference in the supply chain from last quarter to this quarter. We are insourcing some of the major components that uh, were, were some of the uh, potential risks last time. As, as we discussed last time, we have brought the frame in-house. Um, part of that is to give us flexibility on multiple platforms, which allows us to build um, the technology of our skateboard, which uh, with the flexibility of building the frame, the hub motor, and the battery gives us multiple platforms, and we can really build off of that platform to multiple vehicle platforms other than just the uh, endurance truck if we need to. Sure, I'll ask Becky to answer that question. Thank you, Angela, and, and thank you, Joseph, for asking the question. Um, so we made very significant CapEx expenditures uh, in Q2, when compared to Q1, it was 121.3 in Q2 and 54.3 in Q1. So the the biggest uh, the biggest change in our capex outlook for the balance of the year is the prepayments on hard tooling that we'll make either you know late late third quarter fourth quarter, and those were not contemplated when we when we provided guidance earlier earlier this year. With regards to liquidity, yeah, you know, at the end of, of Q three, you know, cash forecasting is always as much of an art as it is a science. And we have levers to pull when we make large cash outlays, like the one I just that I just described. We have flexibility in when we make those prepayments for our for our hard tooling. So we'll make these kinds of decisions when we see how market conditions are and what kind of strategic and financial partnership discussions, how those are progressing. Um, we do have the equity line of credit that we just put in place, and we have not yet utilized that line. So thanks, thanks for the follow-up. Um, as, I, as I just said, you know, we – we put the ELF in place to create a lot of flexibility for us for ourselves, and so as our as our other strategic and financial discussions progress, and as Angela mentioned, we're in discussions with multiple parties on both fronts. Um, as we see how those come together, coupled with the availability under the ELF line, we'll make the that make the decisions about how we how we spend our CapEx. Okay, but there's no, there's no cash level, end of your cash level you're targeting as of today. No, because Joe, just let me, you know, think about just the different levers that Becky was talking about. So, you know, we've made the commitment to hard tools because it's, you know, incredibly important for us to get to, you know, vehicle profitability and they have long lead time components, as you know. So, you know, we're going to make the appropriate, uh, strategic partnership decisions and financial decisions to make sure that we have sufficient cash to execute on our plan. But those are still, you know, there's, there's three or four different moving parts and we will have a better sense over say the next two months as to where we would be. It's a little premature for us to give you a year end cash figure, but we're very conscious okay. of where we okay. stand today. And we, we have a lot of optionalities, what we're trying to say. We will update you appropriately in the coming weeks. 
So it's a great question, and the answer is it's both. And so when we when we talk about strategic partnerships, they can also come with investment, as well as financial investors. So I think your interpretation is is accurate. Okay. Thank Down you. Down to two buckets, right? There are multiple different financial options, and multiple different strategic options, and some of those come with financial investments. Okay. Thank you. I'll ask Becky to answer that. So. don't think I've, I provided any, you know, difference between Q3 and Q4. Um, and again, you know, reiterating that we have a lot of flexibility around when we make our large disbursements. And that's not just CapEx disbursements, but that's also for expenditures that are currently classified as R&D and will stay R&D until we go into production. So that's that's how I would how I would answer your question is just the the optionality that we that we very carefully put in place. And, and think about right some of them mm -hmm. straddle three Q four Q, so some could bleed one to the other. So you know, it's kind of tough to delineate when it could stretch from end of September and early October. So it kind of gets we we put it in that second half bucket without trying to parse it too finely into the third quarter. You have a range of the third quarter and there's some movement there. But we have the optionality to be able to move it. And, and part of this is also, you know, our anticipation of the types of financing we're going to get. I see. Of course. It's a great question. Hi, this is MXUX. I'm just closing this out. Uh, if you like this, if you like the information I'm providing, guys, how about a like and a subscribe? I'd appreciate it. The call is pretty self-explanatory. I think it's very positive. And uh, you can make up your own mind. Uh, I hope you like this format. All the boring stuff is left out.